What's up guys? We are very excited to bring you this special lesson where you are going to get to learn English for cooking and tasting food and we will be sharing some of our favorite recipes that we grew up with. And make sure you watch until the end for the taste test. So before we get into the lesson, we want to let you know that if you're new here, every week we make videos just like this one that help you to master native vocabulary so that you can understand without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Just like Amy from Argentina, who says that our channel has helped her to improve her fluency and her speaking. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell down below. That way you can start improving your fluency too. So the dish that I've chosen to share with everybody today is in Cyprus called Gorbevia. Mm -hmm. And you may have heard these as dolmades in Greece. And because my family originates from Cyprus, I grew up eating these. My grandmother would make them all the time and my dad as well. And he just recently visited mm -hmm. and we made them as well. So I have a lot of memories eating this food. Mm -hmm. We would serve it mainly as a main dish. Mm -hmm. um, you would have it alongside something else, so it would be an accompaniment to something else, maybe something like kologasi, which is taro. Mm. Um, but if you go to a Greek restaurant, you might actually have it as part of a meze, which is lots of small plates, a bit like Spanish tapas. Mm -hmm. Which we're used to having here. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so first of all, you need some fresh or jarred vine leaves. Mm -hmm. And what you would do if you have fresh ones is you would boil them for a while just to make them soft, mm -hmm. and then you would drain them. Then while that's happening, you can make your mixture that's going to actually stuff the vine leaves that you're going mm -hmm. to put into the vine leaves. So traditionally in Cyprus, this is made with minced pork. So it's made with minced meat, but I don't eat meat. Mm -hmm. So we've made a vegetarian version, which is also really good. Yeah. We would of course call that ground beef in the United States. That's true. Or ground pork, I suppose. Yes, mm -hmm. ground meat, we call it minced. minced. Yeah. yeah. So basically we would take some peppers like these ones. You can choose mm -hmm. whatever color you like, but we have red peppers and you would basically chop them up really small so that they're kind of minced anyway. Mm -hmm. And you would fry some oil in a pan and traditionally you'd add chopped onion as well. And then basically add in your peppers or other vegetables if you'd like to try other ones and just fry them off for a while in the pan. Mm -hmm. Then you would add your seasonings. So we have salt, pepper, a little bit of cinnamon, and dried mint, which is really important yeah, I can smell that to, from here. <laughs> yeah, to give the flavor. This is from my dad's garden in Cyprus, mm -hmm. so it's really good dried mint. And then you would also chop some parsley mm -hmm. and add that in there. Um, then you would take some rice as well. Here we have some rice. Really, you can use any rice mm -hmm. and just put that in there and then add your chopped tomatoes. You can use a tin or you can use fresh tomatoes as mm -hmm. well and mix that all really well. Add in some lemon juice because <laughs> it adds a lot of flavor and we yeah, love, love lemons. Lemon. <laughs> yeah. In Greek cooking, it's essential. It's even on the table. Like you have salt and pepper on the table. Mm. We also. It's a condiment. A condiment. Almost. Exactly. Yeah. It is exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so mix that all up and leave it to simmer for a while. Mm -hmm. You don't want to make sure that the rice is completely cooked. You kind right. of half cook it because then they're also going to be cooked once you stuff the vine leaves with them. Mm -hmm. So then once that's ready, you then have to basically lay out a vine leaf on a plate mm -hmm. and with a spoon, just spoon some of the mixture into it and then start rolling them into like a cigar kind of shape. Mm -hmm. And you want to wrap them quite tightly because when they're cooking afterwards, you don't want any of the rice to spill out. Right. So that's really important. And then you basically add them to a pan in a nice circular way, piling them up. Mm -hmm. And then we add a plate on top with a stone to keep them tightly packed mm -hmm. in and a little bit of water. So they're kind of, as you cook them, they're steamed. So they're really healthy. So then you leave them to cook in the pan this way mm -hmm. and steaming for about 30 minutes. And then you can leave them to cool and they're ready to eat. I can't wait to try them. 
I can't wait for you to try them too. I'm so excited. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, you need some fresh or jarred vine leaves. Mm -hmm. Vine leaves are the leaves that grow on grape plants, also known as grape leaves. If you say that a certain food is fresh, it means that it has not been frozen, canned, or preserved in any way. Jarred or canned food is the opposite of fresh and refers to the food that is preserved in a can or jar, and it can be easily bought in a supermarket or grocery store. And what you would do if you have fresh ones is you would boil them for a while just to make them soft. To boil something means to immerse and cook something in hot water. For a while just to make them soft. Mm -hmm. And then you would drain them. Drain refers to the process of pouring out the excess of water from food. It is commonly done after cooking something in boiling water, like pasta or vegetables. So traditionally in Cyprus, this is made with minced pork. So it's made with minced meat, but I don't eat meat. Mm -hmm. We would of course call that ground beef in the United States. That's true. Or ground pork, I suppose. Minced meat or ground meat refers to when the meat is chopped very finely, usually through a machine like this. It's commonly used to make hamburgers, meatballs, or spaghetti sauce. Do you remember that Friends Thanksgiving episode where Rachel is in charge of making dessert and she accidentally makes an English trifle and a shepherd's pie? Yeah. It was so hilarious. Yeah, yeah, that is exactly why we made our Fluent with Friends course because you can have a ton of fun while learning English in a really natural way. So we have a very special treat for you. You can try it absolutely free by signing up for our three-part masterclass. And you'll find that linked up at the top and down in the description below. But I don't eat meat. Mm -hmm. So we've made a vegetarian version, which is also really good. Yeah. A vegetarian is a person who doesn't eat any type of meat, such as beef, chicken, or fish. Their diet includes vegetables, fruits, nuts, eggs, and dairy. You can choose mm -hmm. whatever color you like, but we have red peppers and you basically chop them up really small so that they're kind of minced anyway. If you chop something, you cut it into pieces using a knife. Basically add in your peppers or other vegetables if you'd like to try other ones and just fry them off for a while in the pan. To fry something means to cook it in a pan at a high temperature using oil or fat. Then you would add your seasonings. So we have salt. Seasonings are the things added to the food to increase or improve the flavor. They can be herbs, spices, or even salt and pepper. A little bit of cinnamon and dried mint, which is really important yeah, I can smell that to, from here. <laughs> yeah, to give the flavor. This is from my dad's garden in mm. Cyprus. Mint is a very aromatic culinary herb like this. Dried food refers to the food whose water was completely removed from it, dehydrated, like these raisins or dried apricots. It's a way of preserving it to avoid it spoiling. And then you would also chop some parsley mm -hmm. and add that in there. Parsley is another common herb used in cooking that looks like this. In Greek cooking, it's essential. It's even on the table. Like you have salt and pepper on the table. Mm. We also. It's a condiment. A condiment, Almost. exactly. Yeah. Similarly to seasoning, condiments will also enhance and add flavor to food. However, it's often applied to it after it's cooked, such as ketchup, barbecue sauce, or mustard. So mix that all up and leave it to simmer for a while. Simmer is a cooking method a bit more gentle than boiling. The food is also cooked in hot water, but you turn down the heat before it reaches boiling point, when the bubbles start. And you want to wrap them quite tightly because when they're cooking afterwards, you don't want any of the rice to spill out. Right. If the food spills out while cooking, it means that it falls out of the container in which it's being cooked. Here, as Andrea stuffed, that is, filled the vine leaves with the mixture, we don't want the rice to separate while cooking. Okay, Andrea chose something savory, and so I decided to choose something sweet. We are going to make peanut butter cookies, and this is a super American cookie because we love our peanut butter. 
we even need to have big tubs of it, right? Yes. <laughs> and so this is, is something that you could typically find in an American bakery. We had one just a mile down the road from my house that we always would go to, you know, maybe on Sunday morning when you want something sweet and you can get any variety of cookies there. So this can be a great option. It's super sweet and super soft. And so first off, we're going to cream together the more liquid ingredients. So that would be the peanut butter, the regular butter, and the eggs, and we're also going to then mix in the brown sugar and the white sugar into there until it's a fairly smooth consistency. Then we're going to, in a separate bowl, mix together all the dry ingredients, the flour and the baking soda, baking powder. And once you've done that, you're going to actually combine the two together. Now, when I'm mixing the wet ingredients and then the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients, I usually would use a hand beater Sometimes before I have that, I've used a fork and things like that. So if you don't have that, you can use a fork. Or if you have a really complete kitchen, you could use a stand mixer. So it's pretty simple. And then once everything is combined, you're going to have to chill it in the fridge for at least an hour, although you could do it overnight. And then once that's done, you take it out, you take a tablespoon and you take scoops of it, roll them into balls, put them on a cookie sheet, and then you're going to take a fork and make a crisscross pattern. This is like really, I suppose you don't have to do it, but it's like really typical with peanut butter cookies is when you go to the bakery, you can always see that pattern. You'll automatically know what kind of cookie that is. And you bake them at about 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes or until they're golden brown. Then you'll take them out and you might want to cool them a little bit before you eat them so you don't burn your mouth, but then bon appetit. Sounds delicious. <laughs> I'm so excited to try them. Yeah. And I just wanted to mention, you mentioned Fahrenheit there, but in the mm. UK, we use Celsius, degrees Celsius. So it would be slightly different with our ovens. Right, so I think it's about 175 degrees Celsius if you are using that system, which most of you I'm sure are. Nice. Hey, if you're a foodie like we are, if you love eating, then most certainly you probably enjoy going to restaurants. And that's exactly why it can be very helpful to have the right vocabulary if you're in that situation. So next, after you finish this lesson, I highly recommend that you check out this video. And you'll find that linked up at the top and down in the description below. Okay, Andrea chose something savory, and so I decided to choose something sweet. Savory is the opposite of sweet. It refers to foods that are salty or spicy. We are going to make peanut butter cookies, and this is a super American cookie. Peanut butter is a creamy sweet paste made of dry roasted peanuts that's usually spread on bread. Then we're going to, in a separate bowl, mix together all the dry ingredients, the flour, and the baking soda, baking powder. Dry ingredients are the ingredients used in baking that are not liquid, like sugar, salt, and flour. Baking soda is a white powder made of sodium bicarbonate used for baking cakes, cookies, or bread to help make the dough rise. Now, when I'm mixing the wet ingredients and then the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients, I usually would use a hand beater. Hand beater is a kitchen utensil like this used to mix ingredients until they become smooth. So it's pretty simple, and then once everything is combined, you're going to have to chill it in the fridge for at least an hour, although you could do it overnight. To chill something is to make something cold. It's the opposite of heating something, which is to make something hot. And then once that's done, you take it out, you take a tablespoon and you take scoops of it. Tablespoon is a large spoon like this. It's a common measurement in cooking. Do you know what the smaller one is called? Soup spoon? teaspoon, ladle. A scoop is a bowl-shaped utensil like this. To take scoops of something is to dig out and move small portions from one place to another, like ice cream. Roll them into balls, put them on a cookie sheet, and then you're going to take a fork and make a crisscross pattern. This is like really, Cookie sheet is a flat metal tray like this used to bake cookies. Crisscross patterns are lines that intersect with each other and look like this. You bake them at about 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes or until they're golden brown. Do you know the difference between cooking and baking? Cooking is a more general term for preparing food. Baking is a specific term for cooking with an oven. 
I just wanted to mention, you mentioned Fahrenheit there, but in the mm. UK we use Celsius, degrees Celsius, so it would be slightly different with our ovens. Right. Fahrenheit versus Celsius. Something important to pay attention to while cooking a recipe from a foreign country is to observe if the heating temperature is in Fahrenheit or Celsius. In the US, Puerto Rico, Bahamas, and some other places, the temperature is set in Fahrenheit. In the UK, they use Celsius. Here is the correspondence between the two of them. Then you'll take them out and you might want to cool them a little bit before you eat them so you don't burn your mouth, but then bon appetit. Bon appetit is an expression borrowed from French that means, I hope you have a good meal. Enjoy your food. Sounds delicious. <laughs> I'm so excited to try them. Yeah. So here's some we made earlier. I'm so excited to try them. I think you should go first. All right. <laughs> All right. Fingers crossed you mm -hmm. like them. Hmm. I know you probably don't want to speak with your mouth no. full. What are your... That's bad manners, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's very, very lemony. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm I told you, we like our lemons. And I really like the, um, the cap... No, I was going to say capsicum. Uh, That's Australian, right? Yeah. The pepper. The bell pepper. And um, it's a very smooth texture. Mm. I'm going to finish it, actually. Okay. <laughs> Yay, I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> so, my turn now, right? Mm -hmm. Here we go, so let's break it. Ooh, it's very soft and crumbly. Mm. I like that. You got it. Let's have a go. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> the texture is really soft. They're very peanut buttery. Mmm. I like that. I love peanut butter, so. Me too. Mmm. They're really, really scrumptious. Mmm. I love them. Mmm. Thank you. Absolute delight. We need a cup of tea now. Yeah. Right. Well, I need Coffee. a cup of tea. Maybe you need a glass of wine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like your apron, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Before you even leave your home, you'll probably want to talk about your plans for eating out. This is a very common phrasal verb that simply means to eat in a restaurant. Example, I like to eat out at least once every week. When I lived in Italy, I used to eat out all the time. 